So once again, I'll welcome you to the, uh, the last section of, uh, of this topic of oscillators. And this, today we're going to talk about the multivibrators. And when we look at uh, the bias to the multivibrator, there's a slightly different from the other, from the stable multivibrator in that the first difference is that the base of the two resistors are connected to a common negative voltage VVB so that all of them are at off at one point before the initial application of the, of, of initial application of the pulse. Another thing is that the feedback is coupled eh, through to the transistors, the full is coupled to, through the resistors to, to the base of the transistors so that we get another phase shift, another, operation, another phase shift of 180 degrees other than the one provided by the transistor. So the key thing is that you're supposed to know the, the difference between these diagrams and the, the other, other types of multivibrators. So that's the first point I want to take this. Eh? So the difference, eh? the difference, the difference, between the bias table multivibrator and the stable and the stable multivibrator. R. Number one is uh, the base of the resistors. The base of the resistors. Huh? The base of the resistors are not joined to VCC. Eh? Are not joined to VCC, but connected to a common, a common negative voltage VBB. So the last difference from the stable is that the feedback is coupled through the resistors. The feedback is coupled through the resistors. So this, the meaning of the feedback being coupled through the resistor is because the R2 and R1 are acting as the feedback path for the oscillations that are being generated. So we can now talk about the operation. So we're talking about the operation is that if Q1 is conducting, the first point is that if Q1 is conducting, then the fact that the fact the fact that the voltage at point A is nearly zero reverse biases reverse biases the base of Q2. And therefore, Q2 is off while Q1 is on. Another thing we need to know is that um, with the similar logic reasoning, 
Similarly, if if the potential at point B is <coughs> nearly zero, the base of Q1 will be reverse biased. The base of Q1 will be reverse biased, and so it will remain at cut off, while Q2 will be at saturation. So in these cases, all of them is a, is a, is a condition that makes them go off. By application of a positive pulse, if a positive pulse is applied to the, to the terminal R, the terminal R, the base of the transistor Q2 will be forward biased and and Q2 will go into saturation. This will create a negative potential, potential. This will create a negative potential to the base of the transistor Q1. And so it will remain at cut off. So for us to be able to switch the state so that we have the other state for it to be a bias table, then the point number three will be applied again to the terminal S. When a positive pulse is applied to a terminal S transistor Q1 will turn on and so the near zero voltage at point A will reverse bias Q2 to remain at cut off. But this is basically the operation of uh, this so we can, only, we can only now look at the, the applications of the multivibrators, especially the bus table. So wh where do we get these applications? Number one is the timing circuits. Timing circuits for frequency dividers.
Number two, what we have here is the counting circuits. And number three, number three is the computer memory circuits. And I'll still, I'll still advise you for further, for more information, please visit our website so that we are able to get more of this in terms of the applications. So I'm going to go to another type of um, non-sinusoidal oscillators, which is referred to as Schmidt trigger. So this is an, a, a Schmidt, a Schmidt trigger circuit, and you're expected to know how this one operates. Eh? So at, this input, at the input of Q1, there's a, a sine wave signal, and the output of this Q2, there's a, a collector signal. But what are the initial conditions for us to operate? So without this signal, this transistor is reverse biased. It's it got cut off, it's not on. So with the close of switch, and there's no signal at this input, eh? we, shall have, we shall have small current flowing through R1 all the way to RE. And this current will set, small current will flow because this is ground, we shall have the conducting path here. So when you have to R, it will set up. So when this one is set up, there's a small current that flows. That small current will reverse, bias, will, will put this into some conduction or some bi base bias current that will be, will be turning this on. So the initial condition is that Q1 is off, the Q2 accumulator will become on because there's small current that is coupled from this collector of terminal A. Then it's going to flow through the base of transistor Q2 to turn it on. So another thing you're supposed to understand is that at the input, at, at, at the, at when the pulse is applied at this point here, then what do we expect to happen? When a positive pulse is applied at this point here, when the positive pulse is greater of such the value to overcome the base, the reverse bias at, the, at, at, at this potential, then when this one turns on, the potential at this point will go low. And this potential goes and loads the scope of this one. This one now will switch to the off position. We'll switch to the off position. And the, 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 the voltage at this point, point B, the voltage at point B will now be maximum. And then we shall be able to record an output. So when a negative pulse is applied, then what do we expect? When a negative pulse is applied, then what do we expect? When a negative pulse is applied, then this potential will go very low, extremely low. When it goes very low, then this, the point, the time, the voltage at pot, the potential at terminal A will be high, and this will be for bias in Q2, because it's connected to Q2. When Q2 is now turned on or goes into saturation, then we shall have a low recorded here at this point. And that's where we have at this point, there's a high and a low. That's how we arrive at this kind of sequence. So we need to, uh, to understand the initial conditions before we, uh, the, we apply the input signal so that when explaining, we are able to, know, to understand, the, to know the flow and actually the expected output of that. So we are going to put this down. When the switch S, the switch S is closed and no input signal applied. When the switch S is closed and no input signal applied, a small current flows flows through R A to the ground. This current connects to the base of transistor Q2 
and therefore it is driven into saturation. This is you know, while Q1, while Q1 remains at cut off. So another thing we have is this. When a positive pulse is applied, when an input signal is applied, when an input signal is applied, i.e. the sine wave the positive if the amplitude if the voltage amplitude of the positive the voltage amplitude of the positive part of the sine wave is great enough to overcome the reverse bias condition. then Q1 will change state, will change state, will change state to saturation. Consequently, the potential at point A will go low and cumulatively, cumulatively cut off, cumulatively cut off cut off the transistor Q2 operation, i.e. Q2 will go off. With a negative pulse, with a negative pulse applied. Q1 will remain off and the potential at point A will be high enough to cause the base to, will be high enough to cause the base of transistor Q2 to be biased and turn into Conduction from 
the off state. Cumulatively, this will result into an output square waveform at terminal B. So we can any I want us to take note of that <coughs> any time there's a when this one is conducting the potential at point A becomes zero that one will automatically reverse bias Q2 and when this one is not conducting the potential at terminal A becomes the potential which is slightly above the the, the one required to bias this and therefore current to flow this to this point and cause the conduction of Q2. So when there's a positive pulse, we have the output. When there's a negative pulse, we have the low value. So we record a low, minimum low, and we have a positive pulse, we record a minimum high. But initially, after understanding the initial condition from the first statement we gave today, is because we are going to know when we put a pulse, what's the effect of it, and when there's no pulse, when there's, what's the effect of it. And when, they, when you put the different types of pulse with the positive or negative, what is the response? So we're going to do to have the applications of um, the Schmidt trigger. So applications of Schmidt trigger. <coughs> Number one, we're going to have whatever talk of wave shaping. Number two, we are going to have whatever I found as reshaping of the worn out waveforms. And number three, we are going to have whatever I found as level detector, particularly for pulse discriminator. Level detector. particularly for pulse discriminator circuits. I want us to, to note concerning this is that this is part of the solid state Schmidt trigger circuit. And uh, this application is also done in integrated circuits in whatever we normally refer to as ICs. Eh? And IC, particularly the 5 5 timer, and because the 5 5 timer, the, con the type of configuration will determine the type of multivibrator required. The third circuit here is actually, is actually designed in an I single chip of IC. So whatever I have here is can also be presented with an IC at, uh, with different bars and different connections at the external terminals of the IC. You can have both all the types of the oscillators as we are talking about. And particularly for 5-5 timer, we can have the, the monostable, the astable, the bastable, the speed trigger. All those applications we have done are also provided with using an IC. So the only, change, the only thing that will change is the configuration part of the IC, which basically refer to the notes that we have in our website, and particularly for those applications and the examples of those questions, I'll ask you to please log on to our website and check as we update our daily website with you in place and keep, follow, uh, keep following us because this is a necessity that's very key for you to let this and the integrated IC circuits are applying the same.